The first step was to glue together two pieces of maple. This is the pin block, and it's what the pins will grip when they're screwed in. These miter cuts are 60 degrees for the left side and 50 degrees for the right side. This is so that the treble bridge, which needs to be at two-fifths of the way from the left to the right, will be vertical for ease of playing. Then I made the rails out of curly maple, which are basically just the top and bottom of the dulcimer. Then I drew lines on the pin blocks to mark where I'm going to cut notches to hold the lateral braces that are in the inside. And even though I'm still going to glue them in, I wanted the braces to be press fit, so I measured the lengths carefully. Then I cut fractions of a millimeter off with a table saw and tested them. These holes are drilled in the braces to let more air pass through the volume of the body and to make the instrument lighter. I made these small 3 8 inch square movable vertical braces that rest on top of the lateral ones. There's one under each bridge and they touch the soundboard. I put felt in between the wood for a little bit of give for a bit of a darker tone in the instrument. To make the back and the soundboard, I got these long quarter inch thick planks of mahogany and joined them on the edges so it was a three or four panel glue up each time. And to make them join perfectly I put graphite on the edges and rubbed them together to see where it hit. Then I planed off those areas until it was perfect. Getting ready to glue the frame together, I made these 3 8 inch dips in both of the rails. This is so that you'd have a space to move those vertical braces when you need to. In retrospect, this step wasn't as necessary because you could just make the rails the same height as the lateral braces and it would still be structurally sound. I glued the frame using these wedges and nails that exert inward pressure as well as a bunch of weights and things that I put on top to keep it down.
I traced the F-holes onto a piece of paper, made little marks through the paper with a drill bit, and then drilled a bunch of holes. Then I connected the holes with more drilling and chiseling, and using a scroll saw blade by hand. I humidity sealed the inside with spar urethane to make it less likely for the instrument to go out of tune or for anything to get moldy or any kind of water damage. I'm making the bridges out of curly maple with a string spacing of an inch and an eighth apart. I set my table saw to 10 or 12 degrees and made this cut to make the bridges come up to a point. The first cut is easier because you get some pressure from the blade towards the rip fence. But on the second cut, it has to be all downward pressure because the other side isn't going to touch the rip fence. I found it was way safer to build really long bridges so that it sticks out the other end and you can pull with your hand the rest of the way through. Otherwise, this is a very dangerous cut. Since this is a 1918-6 dulcimer, I needed a total of 43 individual bridges spread out over a treble bridge, a bass bridge, and a super bass bridge. Some of those are split up into smaller chunks of individual bridges for tuning reasons. As you move up in pitch on the dulcimer, the distance between the sides gets shorter, and so the height of the bridge needs to get smaller in order to maintain the same angle when the strings leave the tuners. If some of the strings don't touch the nut, the treble bridge might be unplayable because you play on both sides of it and you're relying on that two-fifths ratio to keep it in tune. I could also just make the whole bridge as short as the smallest end of the taper, but I still want to be able to make the super bass bridge even shorter to maximize playing room on the treble bridge. I had a lot of trouble getting strings to line up and not touch other bridges in the end, so I had to go back and do this step a few times. Basically I just carved out a little bit more room on the base bridges.
I built this jig for my drill press to drill 15 degree holes for the pins so that they're slightly cantilevered. For the trim, I carved a design that I found in a traditional Finnish folk craft book using just a one inch chisel. I glued on the trim, filled any gaps with sawdust and glue, cut off the pointy ends, and beveled the edges with a router. I used five coats of Total Boat Satin Marine Spar Varnish on both the soundboard and the back. Thank you. 